Hello and welcome. I'm Abby Ray with News Desk and thank you for joining me. Today, we'll be talking about the recent live streamed events, a new podcast in the works, the women's football flag team, sports, and more. First up, the KWU Media Production students have been hard at work this semester, producing an unprecedented number of live streamed events from campus. Since COVID-19 pandemic has kept many people isolated and unable to attend live events, these students have been working to ensure that people have been able to appreciate a variety of performances for music and theater. So far, this semester alone, the KWU student media team has provided access to at least 11 live streamed concerts and other performances for a global audience. Student musicians in orchestra and ensembles are assured that people are listening to them perform, and student actors know that even though the seats in Fitzpatrick Theater aren't as full as they used to be, a greater number of people are now have access to seeing them work on the stage. The next major live stream theater performance will be this spring's production of Little Shop of Horrors, which students now are working on to rehearse. In addition, the slate of concert performances with a variety of ensembles and orchestra and even a faculty recital are also on the way. Stop by the KWU Student Media YouTube channel to like and subscribe in order to be notified on the latest live streamed events. In other groundbreaking communications news, our publication students are pitching together to help create a brand new podcast, which just began its first season this semester. The Sandwich Factory is a program that explores the connections between food, culture, science, history, and much more. The opening episode featured two KWU faculty as guests and examined the wide scope of the relationship that we all have with food. Dr. Andrew Bedros, the chair of Department of Sociology at KDUB, says that the universal nature that food itself means that it always has been significant to every culture on Earth. You know, there's a lot of, uh, of aspects of culture that relate to, you know, everything about how people live and everything else. But obviously food is a, is a central theme in many of the activities and rituals people have. It's, you know, probably one of the first uh, pieces of social skills that we pick up on and learn from our families is how we act around the dinner table. Um, this is a, a big part of a lot of our life events. So when we get married, there's food involved. When we have birthdays, there's food involved. You know, when we die, people will have food, you know, to remember us. Dr. Phil Meckley, professor of philosophy and religion, told listeners that food in all of its forms has impacted society by the very work required to create it. He calls almost every part of the cycle of growing, harvesting, and preparing food an integral part of the human experience. Bread is a perfect example of that because um, religiously speaking, there's a long tradition, I'm not going to belabor it, but bread is what's called an aggregate food. It's made with a number of grains of wheat, none of which by itself is enough really to sustain life. So you have to gather, aggregate a bunch of wheat, you got to grind it into flour, you got to prepare it a certain way, you got to let it rise, et cetera, et cetera, you got to bake it. There's a long process of aggregation to get the loaf of bread in the first place. And then furthermore, it's considered an aggregate food because when you eat it, you eat it with other people. So the food that got aggregated together now aggregates all the people together as well. So by definition, the act of eating is a social event. Next, as we celebrate the middle of Women's History Month at KDUB, a brand new student athletic team has been making waves. Women's flag football took the field for the first time this month, making its premier performance. News Desk caught up with head coach Mike Famligletti and asked him about his approach to leading a new team onto the field. You know, there's always those little steps and hurdles that have to overcome where there's been no history before, but we're in the process of establishing the history and we're in the process of really caring and developing what needs to be done, about what needs to be done for a program to be successful for years to come. And we're not really sacrificing any short any long-term goals for some short-term success. So we're really saying, hey, this is the way we want things to be. This is the goal we have, and we're not accepting anything short of those. But Coach Pham, as he's known, isn't alone in helping to steer the team in the right direction. Coach Valerie Ochoa tells News Desk that the challenge of getting a brand new team up and running in their new season has unique and exciting challenges. We really have had such a mesh of girls with experience and without experience and we've had to come together and kind of find a middle ground like those with less experience have really had to like 
learn and almost be like a different class in a way and with classroom sessions and everything and those who do have experience have had to kind of step back and go back to their basics but I just want the girls to realize that they truly couldn't do this season without each other whether they have experience or whether they don't. The team's schedule will typically run from late February to the middle of May each spring. We'll let you know how the team has been doing coming up in our sports segment next week. Now, we go to King Fenene as he continues his exploration of Polynesian culture by tracking down every student on campus that traces their ancestry back to the Pacific Islands. This week, he caught up with Richard Salvador, whose family comes directly from Oahu, Hawaii, by way of Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, how has the culture shock of Salina, Kansas versus, you know, your upbringing, how has how's that affected you? Well, the biggest difference is, is like, people don't eat rice around here, you know what I mean? It's like, where I'm from, it's like, especially how I grew up, it was a lot of Hawaiians, Japanese, Filipinos, lots of them around. And so usually just like, not as much like diversity, it's pretty shocking once I first came here. Speaking of diversity, do you feel like there's enough diversity on campus? I mean, we have to take a look at K-Dub in general versus Salina, Kansas, you know what I mean? Yeah. How do you feel about the diversity here on K-Dub? In Kansas Wesleyan, I feel there's a lot of diversity. You really look around, it's like, you see people from different places, different states, different cities too. It's like, I feel like as a school, we got like really good diversity, but like as a county, not really. Mm. Like located centrally in Kansas Wesleyan, yeah, we got a lot of diversity. Exactly, exactly. All right. And then one final thing. Mm -hmm. If you could bring one thing from our Polynesian culture to Salina, Kansas, what would it be? Shoot. Probably a nice little L&L &L spot. You know what I mean? It's like, ooh. ooh. Yeah, back home, my, one of my grandma's friends, she owns the L&L &L there, so I, was, I always go in and get some free drinks and stuff. I was like, L&L &L or like nice little Hawaiian restaurant like in the area would be perfect. Oh, man, that sounds amazing. Perfect. Well, thank you, Rich. Thank no you for problem. spending time with me today. I got you. Enjoy the rest of your day, yes, brother. Sir, you too. Thank you, King. Next, in huge news, it was announced this week that there is a new partnership with K-Dub and the Salina Family YMCA. KWU and the Y announced Monday that beginning in April, all full-time on-ground KWU faculty, staff, and students will receive free memberships to the Y. In return, KW will provide a pair of grad assistants to help run the sports programs at the YMCA. News Desk asks some of our current students how they feel about this new news. I think it's pretty cool. You know, we have a place where you can go work out if you want. Uh, you know, we have tracks to run at, places to play basketball, sports, and they got a pool, which is awesome because I like to swim. So somewhere I can go to that year round, like that's kind of what you want. I feel like it's a great opportunity for the school to have all the students come together and work out together in a bigger gym compared to the one we have over here. There's nothing wrong with it over here. I'm just saying and also go swimming and hang out and be in a bigger area. What I'm really looking forward to about the partnership with the YMCA is the fact that it will give athletes a better opportunity to use different machines in a weight room. Uh, we do have a weight room here on campus, but it's very limited to what we have, and the Y has way more options, so I'm looking forward to that. In addition, the new partnership will share a strength and conditioning coach that will work in both organizations. The university will provide additional support staff to the Y's main Salina location as well. And finally, a big congratulations is due to four new incoming freshmen who will join the K-Dub Pack as winners of a special scholarship for fine arts majors. Named after the long-serving band director Bill McMosley, each of these four students comes from four different disciplines in the division. Madeline Johnson from Huginton will be a part of the vocal music program as she studies either music education or math. Alexander Rodriguez from Chanute plans to major in psychology or political science while he debates for the national award-winning K-Dub debate and forensics team. Abril Vasquez Ortiz from Wichita plans to be a theater major as she acts at the KW stage. And Katrina Baraji in Kansas City will play for the band as she studies either history or computer science. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning in to News Desk. And if you want any more information on any of the stories we've covered here or more, visit the KW Student Media website or app. Have a great day. I'm Abby Ray.